My last family video showed how you absolutely can be consistent in your parenting. In fact, you already have the skill within you, the wherewithal. If you missed that video, I will link it below. Today, I'm going to answer a reader question in response. What do you do when you feel completely overwhelmed? Because your kids won't listen at all. You can scream and yell and remind, and your words have no power. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Peaceful Home. If you haven't been here before, I'm Teresa. I've been a parenting coach for over 20 years, and I love to help families with their parenting, especially ones that are drowning, the ones that just feel completely overwhelmed and they don't know where to start. Now, my goal is to upload family content on Tuesdays and home content on Fridays, but I have a busy life and it just doesn't seem to be going that way. So I'm going to upload whenever I possibly can. And I so appreciate you watching. If my videos are ever a source of help or inspiration, I would love to hear that in the comments. It means so much to me. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider that. It is completely free. You just hit the button. That's it. I'm going to read a viewer comment on my consistency video. What if I'm unsure of what consequences to give? My five-year-old and even 10-year-old always play hard and start jumping on the sofas. I have to say multiple times to get off. They are not afraid. I don't know how to make them listen. If I take the five-year-old to his room on timeout, he just runs away. I'm at a loss. Nobody is afraid of my voice. As they know, I will yell till I'm blue and I don't know what the right consequence is and how to enforce it. I feel defeated. Well, I just want to thank this mama for writing and I know that this is an experience that's very common. It's also very overwhelming and I have been there. I had times where I would just sob in the shower because I felt so completely overwhelmed and at a loss as to where to even start with my children. As I began to learn about training, the different ways I could positively train my children and how I was training them moment by moment without even realizing it, this is what began to make the shift. So I'm going to address a couple of the things that this viewer brought up. First of all, I say it multiple times. So here's the first thing, you say it once. And in order to do that, you have to get in control of yourself. And that is the most important thing. Often we remind and we say things over and over, hoping that our child will eventually comply and we won't have to worry about a consequence. But what that does is it actually teaches your child that they don't have to obey the first time or even the second or third. They can keep you running, getting you more upset, more angry, while also knowing that there is not a real consequence coming. Now, as far as choosing consequences, I will say that they don't have to be anything big or grand or some new genius idea. They can be very minor because it is not the severity of the consequence. It's the surety of it. It's the consistency that you are going to keep your word and that if your child doesn't listen, life isn't going to go the way it normally does. Now, I also want to jump in here and talk briefly about the importance of connection with your child. Now, that is not the point of this video, and I do have other videos that you can look at in my parenting playlist. And it's so important to be connected to your child. It is vital because rules without relationship equal rebellion, and we don't want that. So today, I'm addressing those moms that actually are trying really hard to be really great, loving, consistent, gentle parents, but their kids are out of control. So the problem is not on the connection side, it's on the training side. And so the consequences are very important. You are the parent. You make the decisions for your child. You decide what they do and don't do, what comes into your home and what doesn't. We use consequences to help our children make good decisions. Now, consequences are very different from bribes and we don't want bribery. That is a way that we literally try to control our child in a negative way and it does not teach good skills. 
bribing our child to do something is actually negative training. It actually teaches them that they should disobey as often as possible because eventually mom or dad will offer them something really good. So you actually reinforce the negative behavior that you're trying to get rid of. So if my child was jumping on the couch and I said, hey, Johnny, stop jumping on the couch. I would expect them to say, yes, mom, and stop immediately. If they didn't, I would say, come here, please. And they would come when they're called because they've been trained to do so. And then we would have a chat and we would lay out the consequence. But if you're in a place where none of that is happening and you haven't trained for anything, this is where I suggest you start. Go for a two-pronged approach. Setting a goal with a reward and then following up with consequences. This is what this looks like. You call a family meeting. You sit down with your children and you say, hey, we've been having a problem. I've been asking you boys not to jump on the couch, yet you continue to do it and you ignore what I say. How do you guys think we could change that? And at that point, I would listen to any ideas they have. Try to draw them out. Try to help them to understand that when you say something, it is so important that they obey because they could be in a place of danger and they need to be willing to listen to your voice and obey the first time without complaining, asking questions, or running the other way. Get your kids input. See what they have to say. Our children are usually very smart and they actually know what they're doing. So often they are either trying to exert their independence or get attention that they need, or they're just being a little naughty, which we all have that in us. Your children are actually waiting, crying out for someone to be able to help them control their emotions and their impulses. And that's our job, to disciple our children, to help them control themselves. I would tell my kids, we're gonna set up a chart and we're going to reward this new behavior that we're looking for. So for the first week, I expect that you guys are not going to be jumping on the furniture. If you forget and you have your feet on the furniture, you're standing or you're jumping, I will give one reminder. Johnny, please do not stand on the furniture or please do not jump on the furniture. And I would like you to answer by saying yes, mom, and getting off immediately. If you do that, you guys will still get your check mark for the day or your sticker or whatever it is, however you're going to keep track, marble in the jar, whatever it is. And you are gonna go that first week and do your very best to get seven check marks. By week two, you're asking them to not jump or stand on the furniture with no reminders. So you'll need to talk about it routinely at each meal, at bedtime, talk about what a great job they did. Let's say they needed two reminders and they responded well when you asked them to get off the couch. I would be so excited about that. I would be telling them how proud I am that they listened and they got down when I asked them to. Now the next step is without being told, can you obey our family rule that we do not stand or jump on furniture. So week two, every day that that does not happen, they get their sticker and you have a reward set for the end of the two weeks. You have a couple of options. You can say, hey, if we got 10 out of the 14 days, we're gonna earn our reward, or there's no time limit, we're gonna go as many days as we can and as soon as we have 15 successful days, here is our reward. I would really encourage you to choose a special event or outing as your reward, because not only does that give your kids something fun to do, but it's something you can do as a family, which fosters even further connection. Now, once you have trained and your kids completely understand the rules, they've had a couple of weeks to practice and they've gotten really good at it, then you need to follow up with consequences when they don't follow this family rule. Now this is where it's important to no longer give reminders 
Now, this may seem confusing, like, hey, during this training period, we were giving reminders. Yes, because you were teaching them how to respond to you the first time. But if you give reminders every single time, then your rule is not, you may not jump on the furniture. The rule is actually, you are welcome to jump on the furniture. You just have to get off if I ask you to. And you have to decide which is the one you really want. This is where parents do not understand that they're negatively training their kids with reminders. Reminders are great for the initial training phase. But after that, you are actually encouraging your child to disobey. So reminders are not a consequence. They are actually a form of negative training. So the reason that you can't get your kids to listen is because you say it too many times. One time, you are training them to respond the first time. Now, in this example of jumping on the couch, you're actually trying to train for you don't ever jump on the couch. But let's transfer this now to another behavior. And this might be something that just happens once in a while. You're asking your child to do something or to not do something. Let's take something that's happened, say, for the first time. So it's not an ongoing behavior. Let's say that you just got a bouquet of flowers and they're sitting on your dining room table. And at dinner, your six-year-old is reaching over and pulling the petals off of the flower. And you say, Sarah, please don't touch the flowers. And she looks at you and she stops for a moment and reaches back up and begins to pick at the flowers. At that point, you have given the command one time. You do not say it a second time. So if this was actually a family dinner, I would get up and I'd say, Sarah, could you come with me, please? And I would probably take her to another part of the room, not in front of the whole family, take her to a private place, duck into the laundry room or the staircase or around the corner so that you can chat with her privately. If you have a child who is well-trained in obedience, then at that point, I would probably give a consequence because I'm expecting first-time obedience in things like this. And I do wanna insert here again, I know I can get so many comments because everything can be taken out of context. I am not talking about requiring obedience so that you can order your children around so that your life is so easy because your kids just do what you tell them to do. That is not what I'm talking about. And this is not a translation where they have to obey every adult. There's a lot of warnings involved there. That's for another video. This is so that they learn to obey you, knowing that they can trust you, that you are not controlling them, you are not being domineering, you are not making them a slave that just works for you and has to do what you say. That is not what I'm talking about here. However, the joy that comes from having a child that obeys the first time, it's amazing. It's bonding for you and your child. Rather than you feeling angry and frustrated and keeping your child at arm's length, it fosters connection. It fosters intimacy. You're no longer mad at your child all the time. You are just enjoying them. And it is such a pleasure. So back to Sarah sitting on the staircase. If you are just learning, this is new in your home and you're practicing and you're learning first time obedience, then we would have a talk. Sarah, what happened at the table? Now, six year old, she may be able to tell you or she might not. And you could say, mommy asked you not to touch the flowers. Did you listen or did you touch them again? No, I touched them again. You know, usually they're a little sad because they realize they're busted. <laughs> I need you to obey the first time. So if I say don't touch, that's the end of it. Now, we need to have a consequence for this. What do you think it should be? A lot of times I ask them because our kids can be really great at figuring out what they need. And if they know they've disobeyed and they're truly sorry and they're humble about it, they will usually pick a reasonable consequence. But if they're not sure, you could say, well, I'd like you to help after dinner and do an extra chore with me. How does that sound? Okay. And I would also lead them to apologize. 
can you say sorry to mom for disobeying? And this again is another learned skill, but I would expect them to look me in the eye and say, mom, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Next time I will try to obey. And then I say, I forgive you. I love you so much. I know that you'll be able to do this in the future. Lots of hugs, cuddles, positive reinforcement, connection, and you both go back to the table together. And you sit down, and at that point, she's gonna be sitting right in front of the flowers again. And with most kids, that's the end of it. But if for some reason she were to touch the flowers again, I would say, Sarah, come with me, please. I wouldn't even repeat the command. I wouldn't mention anything about the flowers. I would just call her to come with me. And I would probably say, I'd like you to just sit here on the stairs for a few minutes. I'll come back and leave her there to sit for a little bit. Now, I will do a video on training for time out because like this viewer said, she puts her five-year-old in time out and they just come out. So what do you do with that? You actually have to train for a timeout. And I know this sounds like a lot of work, but if you will do the hard part in the beginning, it's like anything else. When you invest, the rewards are amazing. I guarantee you will reap the rewards of your consistency. Now the other huge plus with this type of training is that you don't get angry because you don't ask five times. You don't keep repeating yourself. It's the first time you are disciplining before you get angry. Now this is hard as parents because a lot of us have learned to go with our emotion. So if I feel mad the fifth time I've told you, well now I'm really gonna yell or I'm gonna swat you in my anger or I'm gonna threaten something. Now the opposite of that means you don't feel the anger. So that's not what's driving you. And for some parents, that's where they struggle to insist on obedience the first time because they don't feel mad. So I'm like, well, this isn't enough to get me off the couch, whatever, I'll just let it go. Or I'll just remind again and hope they listen. Don't do that. Don't go by your feelings. Follow up immediately after the first time that they don't listen. Now I'm gonna take this one step further. Let's say that you've set up your two weeks of training with a reward at the end. Afterwards, the plan is to follow up with first time obedience in everything or no reminders for whatever the thing is that you're training them, whether it's training them not to jump on the furniture or to come the first time they're called or to sit at the table until they're excused, it doesn't matter. Let's say that your first day into your training, your child just jumps on the couch and you say, hey, buddy, I need you to get off, please. And they just keep bouncing and they won't get off, even though you gave them the reminder. At that point, depending on how volatile your child is, if, if they really struggle with dysregulation, if they become very emotional or irate in these situations, you have to be very gentle. So most likely what I would do is I would walk away from that situation and bide my time. So I know that Johnny didn't listen the first time and now I'm gonna walk away and I'm letting him jump on the couch. I'm gonna let this go for now and then when it's time for bed, I'm going to say, Johnny, do you remember earlier when mom asked you to stop jumping on the couch? Yeah, did you listen? No, you didn't. You didn't listen to mom the first time. And now in our home, when mom or dad ask you, you need to say, yes, mom, yes, dad, and obey the first time. But you forgot today. And I understand that we forget sometimes but there is a consequence for that. And now there needs to be a consequence. So again, this viewer said, what are the right consequences? Take out a piece of paper right now and begin to write down reasonable consequences. That way, when something happens, you will have some ideas ready. 
Think of how you control things in the home. You control their bedtime, their eating time, what they eat, what they watch. So removing screen time is huge. Uh, going to bed early is often a great consequence. Um, missing out on a special treat, event, a dessert. Um, losing privileges of a favorite game or toy. Doing extra chores doing the chores of a sibling, especially if there was conflict with that sibling and you're looking for a way of restitution. Losing screen time is usually a really great consequence and it usually carries a lot of weight with our children. And so I suggest that you implement that slowly. If you have a child that is not used to being corrected, if you have not implemented any consequences or you've only used bribes or reminders, or you have a child that is probably going to escalate emotionally very quickly, then you may need to really take some time in explaining the consequence. So with the steps I talked about before, have your child calm, give them some time to think about what they did and be willing to apologize. Have them think about what consequence might be appropriate. That's already getting their little brains thinking. And then when you come to a conclusion together, or even if you have to say, well, but I don't know if that's the best consequence this time, this is what we're going to do. And above all, when we're talking about consistency, when you've chosen a consequence, please follow through. Do not decide later, oh, you know what? It wasn't that big of a deal. I'm just going to let it go. If you do that, you've negatively trained. This is the equivalent of telling your child, go ahead and disobey. If I'm in a bad mood, you might be punished. But if I'm in a good mood, maybe not. That just leaves your child never knowing where they stand. They need to depend on you. They need to count on you. That you are a person that keeps their word and you will do what you say. A key point is do not throw out the consequence in anger or frustration, and don't do it immediately on the heels of the offense. So for example, the five-year-old is jumping on the couch, you don't say, that's it, you're going to bed 10 minutes early tonight. Because what are you gonna cause? An immediate reaction. Usually that child is going to be upset, they're either going to have a tantrum, they're going to lash out at you, they're going to cry, you know, depending on, on how much they're affected by the consequence that you decide on, but that's not the time to bring it up. You wait, and then maybe you guys are sitting at dinner and you say, hey buddy, do you remember when you didn't listen to mom today? We are working at not jumping on the furniture. I asked you to get off and you did not obey the first time. So this means that you're gonna go to bed 15 minutes early tonight. Now that doesn't sound like much, but for my kids, it was something. And if they aren't even really aware of time, you literally could put them to bed five minutes early. They're not even really aware of the time, but they are aware that there is some sort of loss to them and they don't like it usually. And so it's enough to help them remember, last time I didn't obey mom, I had to go to bed early. So we don't hang it over as a threat. We don't say, hey, if you don't get down right now, you're going to bed early. That's a threat. We ask them the first time when they don't obey, we wait until they are calm and listening, and then we talk about the consequence. It's even better if you can have your child realize that they disobeyed, say that they're sorry, and then ask, what do you think the consequence should be? Now, if they come up with one that you think is reasonable, great. Say it was a rather large offense and they say, oh, I should get only 50 minutes of screen time instead of an hour. You might go, no, I don't think that's enough. And so you can kind of negotiate at that point because they may choose something that really isn't that severe. I've also seen kids say, I should be grounded for a week and I should never have dessert. And, you know, they come up with all this stuff and it's like, okay, hold on. <laughs> it wasn't that severe, you know, we don't need to go that far. 
but it does help them when they start to think of what would be an appropriate consequence. And because you're getting them in that frame of mind, it doesn't feel punitive. It doesn't feel like you are angry and therefore you're making them pay. Because remember, you're not angry. You're not upset. You are filled with peace. You are filled with love. You are going to follow through when they didn't listen and give a consequence. So now the most important thing is that when it's bedtime, say, hey, buddy, I need you to get in bed 15 minutes early. I will still come in and tuck you in. We do not remove our affection and our presence from our children as punishment. So they should see that they've kind of been removed from the family. Maybe they're missing out on a story time that you do. They've had to brush their teeth and go to bed, and then you get a chance to go in, lay down with them, talk about what happened, tell them that you absolutely know that this isn't gonna be a problem in the future. You believe in them and that you love them. There should be a lot of affection, back scratches, hugs, whatever type of bedtime routine is important to your child. Let's go to a new scenario. Let's say that your 10 year old Robert is playing in the backyard and you call him to come in for dinner. Today we're mainly talking about parent imposed consequences, not necessarily natural consequences. If a child didn't come in when they're called for dinner, a natural consequence would be that they don't eat. Another one could be that you've served up the food and let's say all of your kids love mashed potatoes, it's their favorite. Well, everyone's plate is served, the extra potatoes are put away, and when they come to the table, you just say, sorry, bud, we're all out of potatoes. And that's one of the things that he misses out on. Now, that's at a point where you can say, next time, I hope you come the first time I call. And you're not lecturing, you are not nagging, you have a smile on your face, hope in your heart, and you just simply say something like that. The other thing is, let's say that they eventually came in, you only asked once, but it was delayed. They came in finally to the table and you're all sitting there. When everyone is done eating, you call your child aside and you say, hey Robert, do you remember when I called you to come in? Did you come the first time I asked? No, you didn't. So what happens in our family when you don't listen the first time? There needs to be a consequence. I'd like you to go sit on the couch in the living room and think about that for a few minutes. And you go back to helping the other kids clear the table, you're getting the kitchen cleaned up. And after a little break, you're gonna go over and sit down. Okay, Robert, um, what have you been thinking about? And you're always wanting to engage in conversation, draw your child out, see what they're thinking. And maybe he says, well, mom, I know you called me, but I found this really cool lizard and I was trying to catch him. And then you can say, that is so cool. Did you get him? No, I didn't have enough time. I understand that you really wanted to catch that lizard, but it is so important that you obey mom and you come the first time that I call you. And so there needs to be a consequence. What do you think that should be? Now, so much of this depends on the personality of your child, because if at any time, they begin to fall apart, you put a pause on the conversation. You don't argue with them, you don't threaten them, you don't let your anger build, you take a break. And say, buddy, I can tell you're upset, let's just take a minute, we don't need to decide anything right now. And you walk away, let them calm down, come back again, tell me what you were thinking. Well, I just think it wasn't fair because I was looking for the lizard and now you say I have to have a consequence. Yep, that's right. That, that's how it works in our family. And you know that I love you so much and I always want you to catch lizards. And you could appeal. That's another video, how to appeal. I'm making a whole list today of things that we can talk about. The appeal is very important. But you didn't listen the first time. So tonight, your consequence, even though your job is to clear the table, I want you to stay and finish the kitchen cleanup with me. 
And again, if he explodes and say, okay, buddy, you need to just sit here and be calm. We'll talk about it in a few minutes. Remove yourself. And what you're doing is you're establishing we don't fight. We don't yell at each other. Mom doesn't quarrel with you. She doesn't yell. She doesn't hold you down. She doesn't drag you around. She listens. She loves and she walks away when you're too upset to even know what you're doing. And this is so important because this is how we are helping our child regulate their emotions. This is just the start of one component of it, but it's very important. So maybe the family is already pitching in to clear the table and start their, their chores because that's the first job that needs to happen and it's Robert's job. So maybe you say, you know what guys, we're just gonna put the time out on KP for now. You can all go play and um, I'll let you know if I need you. So your other kids are off. You go back to Robert. Okay, bud, are you ready to work on the kitchen cleanup with me? And hopefully at that point, he has a better attitude. He's ready to go. Um, it's really great at that point if you can do apologies, if he's willing to apologize so that you can forgive, you can hug, you can have that connection. And then say, are you ready to come and do your chores with me? Now, even here, this is where parents feel like a consequence has to make a child completely miserable. I just don't believe that's true. So let's say that your child's job is to clear the table, but it's been a rough 30 minutes. You're finally there. You are going to help. You're going to say, hey, bud, I'll help because you're going to be helping me with the other dishes. So we'll do everything together. So. You're clearing the table and then you're washing and maybe you're going to have him dry dishes or load the dishwasher or put salad dressing in the fridge or whatever it is and of course it's dependent on their age but at that point they're going to be working with you in the kitchen you could even say hey robert why don't you pick some music what do you want to listen to while we're cleaning the kitchen and again this is connection I know there were, are people that will say, you're gonna let your kid pick music when they're being punished. Well, again, I don't see it as a punishment. I see the consequence as doing its job. And your child is gonna get it, but they're gonna get it without being pushed to the side and yelled at. They're gonna stay connected with you, but you're still gonna make them do their chores. They're going to do those. And if at any point he's not cooperating, or having a bad attitude, he needs to go and have a seat and you just stop the kitchen cleanup until he's ready. I know this feels like a lot. Even as I've been talking in this video, it's so much. I encourage you to listen to this video over and over. Begin to grasp the concepts. Begin to understand what it means to only say something once what it means to not wait until you're angry, what it means to give your child a pause when they're too emotional. These are all things that take weeks, months, years to implement correctly, but you can get started now. As always, leave your questions and comments below. I would love to hear from you. If you're subscribed, you may wanna hit that notification bell that way you'll be alerted when I do the follow-up videos on this one. So coming up next will be how to train for a timeout and how to use the appeal process. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Peaceful Home. Have a great day.